People are leaving Idaho. Wait, what? For the past several years, all we've been hearing about is how many people are flocking to Idaho. So could it possibly be true? Are people leaving Idaho? Well, the short answer is yes. And here are the top six reasons they are packing up and moving out. Reason number one, it's overpopulation. Now, let me just get this out of the way quickly. There are still plenty of people moving to Idaho. There isn't a gigantic group of people fleeing Idaho by any means. Over the past five years, Idaho has seen a lot of people relocating here from places like California, Arizona, Washington, Oregon, and Texas. And we have always seen a lot of people moving from places like LA, Houston, Seattle, and really the Midwest in general. But in recent years, the extreme sellers housing market has really changed the landscape. Home prices reached almost unimaginable heights in 2021 and 2022, making both home buying and renting really challenging. In many of the high tax states, such as in California, people were left with a really big decision. Do I buy what I can afford here, which is kind of like a shack, or do I move to a place that I can afford more? Comparing the cost of living and overall lifestyle and quality of life, well, that made a lot of people choose Idaho because, yeah, with a lower cost of living and higher quality of life, who can say no to that? And now, let's just get this out of the way real fast. Idaho's growth is not only due to Californians. That said, well, Californians migrating to Idaho has accounted for about 20-ish percent of the growth that we have seen over the past several years. And then in the Boise area alone, we have seen roughly 15,000 Californians move in just in 2023 alone. And the year isn't over yet. But it's certainly not only Californians moving here. People from all over the country have been flocking to Idaho for over a decade now. And yes, that migration wave really pretty much became a tidal wave during the pandemic. And fair enough, our state is absolutely gorgeous. And our abundance of outdoor recreation and activities are, well, pretty hard to beat. And then for quite some time anyhow, all of that came at a fraction of the price of so many other states. So yeah, across the state of Idaho, we have definitely seen some significant growth. And well, that population boom has left some areas just feeling a bit too crowded. And that's especially been felt by the longtime locals. Back in 2020 and 2021, gosh, it seemed like homes were just flying off the market, sometimes before they even hit the market. And having all those homes snatched up and moved into? Well, yeah, our traffic across the state has really gotten a bit bonkers. Just across the board, really, it now has a different feel and vibe than it did four or five years ago. And then if you compare that to what we saw a decade or more ago, yeah, that's been a hard pill to swallow for some. Now, I should pause here and say that when we as Idahoans moan and groan about our traffic, well, yeah, it's subjective and totally dependent on where you're coming from and therefore what you're comparing it to. If you're coming from, say, the Bay Area or Seattle, then you are likely going to be rolling your eyes the first time you see our version of crazy traffic. It's all relative though, right? What's the big deal? What's the big deal? Okay, let's talk about issue number two. Let's talk about wildfires. Yes, living in Idaho will mean you will be aware of and potentially even threatened by wildfires. Forest fires are a significant concern here in Idaho, and that's especially true during the dry summer months. Our state's landscape, which includes extensive forests and grasslands, is susceptible to wildfires due to factors like dry conditions, lightning strikes, and sometimes, unfortunately, just negligent human activities. Like, for example, this one. Yeah, this one happened back in 2015. And well, I'm not sure if the culprit deemed the pooping cyclist is still here in the area or not. But anyhow, all jokes aside, and hey, he did come forward and contacted the authorities on his own, which is saying something, I guess, right? But anyhow, my point here is that living in Idaho will mean that you will live in a place where fire danger is real. And even if you don't live in the mountains or woods, but instead in, say, a master plan community in Meridian or a condo in Eagle, well, the air quality will be impacted at least once or twice most years. Typically in the late summer months, early fall period is when we see our air quality impacted by fires. So last year and the year before that, our air quality was so low due to nearby wildfires that our kiddos' soccer leagues ended up canceling practices and games for a few days. And our main school district here, West Ada, which is also where my two boys attend, they ended up canceling recess outside and all outside activities until the air quality improved. 
Now again, does this happen every single year? Certainly not. And actually it didn't happen this year, which has really been great, but it has happened. And unfortunately due to how Idaho is positioned with neighboring states and Canada and just Idaho's landscape, wilderness and the climate and weather patterns, well, yeah, it will happen again in the years to come. The town I grew up in in Eastern Oregon, which is about three hours from where we live now in the Boise area, we experienced a terrifying wildfire there about eight years ago. My parents almost lost the ranch I grew up on and some of our lifelong friends lost their absolutely incredible log home tucked into Strawberry Mountain. Witnessing that really is something that you truly never forget. And for some, the annual fire danger risks that we see here in Idaho, well, for some, it's just too much. We've certainly had people move here from California and Oregon only to find that the fire danger is just too close to what they fled from. Thankfully, in Idaho, we do have an amazing fire management team, and there are always many fire management efforts in play that are crucial when it comes to mitigating these risks. So things like controlled burns, selective tree harvesting, brush clearing, and then in some areas we also have what we call fire wise communities. So here in the Boise area, we see those kind of communities in and around the Boise foothills and in places like the Avamore community. So if you haven't ever witnessed a wildfire firsthand, this might seem like no big deal to you, but for those of us who have and therefore full understand that when it comes to wildfires it's just not as simple as just squirting some water and putting them out it's pretty much like asking the Coast Guard to stop a hurricane they can be pretty darn traumatic so being in a firewise community that offers actionable help can really offer a large amount of needed peace of mind okay so now let's talk about number three let's talk about politics now hold up hold up <laughs> before you hit that little X button to the close this video out altogether because gah politics it's already all over the the news, right? But hear me out. And actually, if you're in that bucket of people that was about to close this video, then chances are you're exactly the person that needs to hear this. Over the past several years, we have definitely seen people pack up and move out because once they got to Idaho, the political landscape just wasn't what they were expecting or what they wanted to find. And what's interesting is that we have really seen that on both ends of the political spectrum. Unless you've been living under a rock, you likely know that in Idaho as a whole, well, Idaho is a very red and pretty darn conservative state. That said, increasingly, there are a lot of areas that we have seen begin to, or that have already turned into shades of blue. So there's light blue and even some denim, I guess you'd call that. And well, also there are some areas that are just kind of purple. For example, let's look at the north end of Boise. If you look at the last two presidential elections over the past eight years, that area of the Treasure Valley has definitely become more liberal and more democratic leaning. That said, of course, not every north ender is okay with being grouped in and being labeled as being a progressive. Man's crazy. Loco. And some of those people have decided to pack up and move out. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> On the flip side, we have also seen people who moved into Boise believing it will be more liberal than the other cities that make up the Treasure Valley, only to find themselves a bit disgruntled by all the big jacked up trucks flying Trump flags down the street. Because well, living in Idaho will mean that you will indeed see just that. And with the next electoral season really revving up, well, you could expect to see that on an almost daily basis. And if you choose to make Boise your home, well then, with the capital right in the heart of the city, yeah, there are going to be a lot of people voicing very strong feelings on both ends. So just know that for both Democrats and Republicans, we have seen people move here from out of state only to find themselves bouncing right back from wherever they came from because they weren't exactly thrilled by what they found in regard to social issues, city legislation, and politics. Okay, now let's talk about issue number four, high housing costs, and that's for both buying a home as well as renting. Now, we touched upon this with number one because of all the people moving here. So yeah, record high demand. Well, if you remember Econ 101, you know that if and when demand is high and supply is low, then what happens? Prices increase. And with record low rates, which gosh, we sure do miss those days, don't we? But when rates were so low, buyer's purchasing power was also heightened. Can, can we afford this? 
and that definitely helped to effectively just skyrocket prices even more. So you might be thinking, but wait, now that rates are significantly higher than they were during the pandemic, uh, shouldn't that be helping to effectively lower home prices? And theoretically, well, theoretically, you are right. It should be. But the rate at which we are seeing home prices across Idaho tick downward is, well, it's moving at a, especially in comparison to how quickly we saw home prices skyrocket, the downtick is moving at a downright glacial pace. By all means, move at a glacial pace. You know how that thrills me. For so long, Idaho was widely known and well-regarded as being a place with incredibly affordable housing. And well, that's simply not the case for many today. Similar to traffic though, this is of course subjective. If you're already a homeowner and are selling your home in say California or Arizona or say the Seattle area, you might still be blown away by what the equity of your average 2000 square foot home in Sonoma could buy you here in Idaho. So what about people who need to rent? Well, again, if you are paying, say, $3,000 a month for a studio apartment in LA or San Francisco, our rent here is probably going to seem crazy affordable. But compared to where it was five or six years ago, my goodness, the increase we have seen has been significant. One small piece of good news is, well, actually, I should probably start with the bad news on this one. The bad news is that over the past three years, rental prices across Idaho have increased by a notable 30.8% percent, which is obviously a pretty significant increase. Ouch. But the slight piece of good news for potential renters anyhow, is that we are now here in the fourth quarter of 2023, we're finally seeing rental prices tick downward. And they are now 5.8, so almost 6% lower than they were last year at the same time. So that decrease certainly isn't negating the nearly 31% jump we saw over the course of three years, but the downward trend is certainly helpful for people who are either here already renting or need to rent when they first arrive. So for many people packing up and bouncing out of the state of Idaho, well, there is no question that the housing market is one common culprit. So here I am as a realtor telling you that our Idaho housing market is a bit bonkers, but well, you clicked on this video because you were looking for some candid and just honest info. So there you have it. Now let's cover issue number five. Idaho has four distinct seasons. And while for many that is a big draw and something they love about living in Idaho, well, for others, our winters can send them packing. Now, before I go on, can we please just take a sec to appreciate how long the state of Idaho is? That's a lot of spread. And heck, for whatever reason, many people often don't initially recognize that Idaho, well, Idaho borders Canada. Canada? <laughs> so yeah, winters up in North Idaho are significantly different than what you experience in Central Idaho and then certainly in Southern Idaho where Idaho's largest city of Boise is. For my family, and again, we live in the Boise metro area, we are often asked by people considering moving to the area from other states how we deal with such horrible winters. How do you live? How do you and well, our winters really aren't as bad as most initially think they're going to be. Do we get snow every single winter? Absolutely. We get just enough to ensure that we will most likely have a white Christmas, but not so much that we can, I don't know, substitute snow shoveling for going to the gym on a daily basis. Certainly not what they experience anyhow in Northern Idaho in areas such as Sandpoint. That said, we have experienced a couple of snow agedans since moving here 15 years ago, but really only one that truly stands out, and that was back in the winter of 2016, 2017, and honestly, it was all over and done with within a few weeks. Um, actually, I think I don't even think it was that long. I think it was like a week and a half, but it was very dramatic when it happened for the people that weren't ready for it. <laughs> so anyhow, if you are not into snow and just flat out have zero interest in owning a parka or let alone a snow shovel, then moving to Idaho would, well, probably be a bad choice for you. Unless on the other hand, you are thinking of being a snowbird and just, I don't know, migrating south to Arizona for the winter months, which is something we actually see quite a lot of people do here quite happily. Anyhow, we often tell our clients and friends who are considering moving to Idaho from states that have just more Mediterranean-like climates, such as California or Arizona, to be sure to try, if at all possible, to come visit during the winter months. Because, well, if you can love or at least really like or enjoy Idaho during during mid-January, then I'm pretty certain you will probably be pretty happy with what you find throughout the rest of the year. Full disclosure, I do have to say, even for people such as myself who love having four distinct seasons, well, that range from like January 3rd or 4th until the beginning of March, so really right after the holidays, things are packed up, but before spring kicks in, well, it's kind of cold and slushy and just kind of meh. 
just flat out, that range is not my favorite. <laughs> that all said, once spring kicks in, holy moly, I feel like I just kind of appreciate it even more. And in large part, that's due to how just, again, meh, the weeks are before it. So it's worth it to me. But again, that is my take. Your take on this will be exactly that, yours. Now, on to issue number six. Let's talk about entertainment. So while Idaho is a state with a lot of natural beauty and so many things to do outdoors, well, it's not exactly known for having a bazillion big scale entertainment options. There are no major theme parks or amusement parks and the biggest cities are relatively, of course, pretty small compared to the biggest metro areas in most other states. That said, we do have the largest water park in the Northwest, Roaring Springs, which is right here in South Meridian. And well, my goodness, we also have the Niagara of the West Shoshone Falls and there's the Craters of the Moon and the Bruno Sand Dunes and well we've got so so many natural hot springs but well you're probably noticing a bit of a trend here yeah most of our biggest attractions tend to be of the outdoor variety so if you are more of a show and museum kind of person well, the state of Idaho just doesn't have as many to peruse and check out as many other states do. That said, the Boise metro area certainly has more than enough to keep me entertained. What do you like to do? So yeah, I grew up on a fallow deer ranch with my nearest neighbors about a mile away, so my take on this might be just a little different than yours. But most find that the Boise metro area really has a larger array of attractions and entertainment options than they initially think they'll find. And that is often said to be true to about Coeur d'Alene, uh, Twin Falls, and the Sun Valley area certainly. So there you have it, the top six reasons we are currently seeing people pack up and leave the state of Idaho. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have absolutely any questions about any of the issues I covered in this or about various areas across the Treasure Valley, please don't hesitate to give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. My very low pressure and just down to earth team are here and would love to help you explore the area and determine if it would be a good fit for you and whoever it is that's coming alongside of you. Thank you so much for watching. I just hope you have a great rest of your day.